Hi guys, Dr. J here. Let's talk about the kidneys, which are the masters of body chemistry. But let's use the heart as a starting point of this story. Put your right hand on your chest and you will feel your heart beating. Each beat squeezes blood and pushes it forward. So the blood reaches each organ system to provide fuel for energy and nutrition for growth and repair. So let's take the muscle system, particularly the thigh muscles. So the heart pumps blood into the arteries, which are represented in red. And these arteries carry fuel and nutrition to the muscle. Then the muscle processes this fuel and nutrition and produces waste. Where does that go? For that, you need veins, and the veins are represented in blue. And the waste gets dumped into the vein to the rest of the body. This is why you need a waste processing system, which is what the kidneys do. The kidneys are in the back of the belly on each side of the spine. And if you look at an individual kidney, it's about the size of a fist. This organ is really a marvel. It weighs only a quarter pound, yet it can filter and, as we will see later, chemically balance a typical 170 pound body. So this body is about 600 or 700 times the kidney size, and the kidney can clean this entire body. You might think from the appearance of the kidney that it feels kind of like an apple. It's more like a peeled orange. In other words, a fluid-filled structure which you can handle, but you need to handle with delicacy. And like all organs, the kidney has an artery and a vein. So if you hold a kidney in the body while it is still attached, you feel a faint pulsation as the blood is pumped into the kidney through the artery and leaves the kidney through the vein. The kidney also has attached to it a ureter, which carries the urine away from the kidney. And when I was first studying anatomy, I pictured this kind of like a vein, a tube that somehow got the urine to the bladder, perhaps by gravity. Nothing of the sort, actually. You can see in this live donor video a ureter moving around like a worm and pushing the urine towards the bladder. And when the ureter is cut, you can see the urine is under quite a bit of pressure. Okay, so passing to an illustration, this is how we'll represent the kidney. So the waste in the body goes into the kidney. The kidney processes the waste. And then the waste is carried out in the ureter and the urine ends up in the bladder. So let's think about this. How does the kidney know that there is waste in the body? What the kidney senses is the blood in the artery that goes to the kidney. That blood is made up of solids and a liquid component, which is primarily water. And the waste is actually in the water, part of the blood. So basically you have dirty water. That dirty water goes in the kidney, and then the kidney extracts the dirty water from the blood and sends it out in the form of urine. If you make an analogy with filtering orange juice, the sieve is like a filter, like a kidney. The water with solids is like blood with the solid red cells, and the water that's removed without the solids is urine. So, are we saying the kidney just gets rid of dirty water? Wouldn't that lead to dehydration? The kidney does extract dirty water and the waste that are in this water from the blood and then sends that into the urine to get rid of the waste. But it must also reabsorb water without waste in order to maintain water balance in the body as needed. So let's look at the bladder. The bladder has urine. And urine can have different colors. So a darker urine means that there's a lot of waste and very little water. At the other extreme, urine can be very light, which means that there's a lot of water and relatively little waste. And so by looking at the color of your urine, you can tell what your water balance is. And this is why I tell donors that, yes, they can drink to thirst, but they should also look at their urine to decide if they're drinking enough. Dark urine may mean that you're not drinking enough water. Okay, so far we've said that the kidney removes wastewater from the body and as a related function maintains water balance. As another related function, the kidney controls blood pressure because as you know from a low pressure sink or a high pressure hose, the amount of water in a tube like a pipe or a blood vessel controls pressure inside that tube. And so because the kidney controls the water balance in the body, it can control blood pressure. So we have water in the bloodstream, and that water has sodium, which is represented by the letters NA. 
Sodium is basically table salt. So let's take a glass of salty water. If you pour in water without a lot of salt in it, you're going to end up with much less salty water. So when the kidney reabsorbs water, it changes the saltiness of blood. Does this matter? Well, let's go back a couple millennia, and we know that life came from the oceans. And the ocean has a lot of salt in it, sodium. And it turns out that the body water is very much like ocean water. So the body's saltiness has been preserved for millions of years. So clearly, it must be a very important factor in the balance of the body. So the kidney removes wastewater, reabsorbs water, and by the same token, must control the quantity of sodium in the blood. So body fluids have a lot of sodium in them. And earlier I discussed how you could look at the color of your urine to decide if you needed to drink more water. But it's important to understand that body fluids like sweat are not just water. They have a lot of sodium in them. So if you lose a lot of sweat, you need a balanced electrolyte solution, not just water. Otherwise, the kidney can't really just work with the water. You have to provide it with some sodium. Now let's look at cells. As mentioned, cells are surrounded by body fluid, which contains sodium, or Na. But inside the cells is mainly potassium, or K. So the K and the sodium must be kept in balance because that balance is responsible for the electrical currents in the body. Too much potassium in the blood messes up these electrical currents and can lead to ventricular fibrillation, a deadly heart rhythm. So the kidney has to not only control the sodium, but it also has to control the potassium. So far, the kidney filters blood, which leads to control of water balance, which in turn leads to controlling the sodium, which in turn leads to controlling the potassium also because sodium and potassium are in balance. So you can see that just filtering the blood leads to a lot of other related issues. Now, if you look at the potassium in the cells, there's a lot of it, so it's trying to push out and go into the body, and there's a lot of sodium outside the cells, so that's trying to push into the cells. So this has to constantly be adjusted, and cells have these pumps. And these pumps, cellular pumps, maintain potassium inside the cell and sodium outside the cell, and these pumps depend primarily on calcium. So the kidney, if it's gonna be in charge of sodium and potassium, really has to be in charge of calcium. And where is most of the calcium? Calcium is usually stored in bones. So in order to control the calcium, the kidney makes vitamin D, which leads to storage of calcium in the bone. And calcium is also bound to phosphorus in the bone, so the kidney also controls phosphorus. So in the blood, we have a liquid component, which is primarily water, but we also have a solid component which is mainly made of red blood cells. And if you look at a normal red cell number, and then you look at anemia, you can see that there's a lot more water in the bloodstream in the case of anemia. So if the kidney controls water, it has to control red blood cell production. And it, this it does through a hormone called erythropoietin, which will increase the amount of red cells in the blood if you're anemic. I've tried to give a sense of the many functions of this amazing organ and how these functions are interrelated. One function leads to the other.